on March 18, 2020, I had zero TikTok followers. 15 days later, under the handle Pick for President, I had posted 40 TikTok videos. My first video went something like this. I put on my suit, walked into the second floor bathroom in my family's house, and filmed myself in the mirror saying the following words. Hello, my name is Isaiah Pink. I am 19 years old and I am running for President of the United States in 2020. I am running as an independent. I am running as an anti-capitalist. I am running as a member of Generation Z and I am running for all of us. Please like, share and follow to help us build a movement. That video, my 34 second long campaign announcement, now has 60,000 views. But behind the scenes, things were a little bit more complex. My page started as a class assignment. I had just been sent home from my college because of COVID, but given the world that we live in, no more classrooms doesn't mean no more class. I had an assignment for my introduction to sociology course to do some original research and construct a sociology of the Trump era. In my proposal for this project, my research question was, in what ways does capitalism create incentive structures in media that favor candidates like Trump? And how does that media form new subjectivities? In other words, how does social media change politics and how does social media change us? I began my account during a very political time for both me and my country. The Democratic primary was in full swing and everybody was talking about politics. TikTok at the time was a pool of young liberals, leftists, libertarians, and Trump supporters. I had long wanted to build a career out of political advocacy, though I didn't know yet how that might begin. I wanted to spread my progressive political beliefs and form a community with young people like me. I wanted to jump into that pool, and so I did. On April 2nd, 2020, after those first 40 videos, I had 2,500 TikTok followers, and I was overjoyed. TikTok is a very big platform. According to Business of Apps in 2021, they have 689 million monthly users across the world and 100 million in the United States. TikTok Global, the company that was formed to own TikTok to avoid certain state bans, earned an estimated $1 billion in global 2020 revenue. In the US, 60% of users are under age 30. Young people like me are defining this space. TikTok is also a very interesting platform, unique in two ways. First, the content is all videos, all shorter than a minute. Video creation is super streamlined. You can shoot, edit, and publish instantly, all within the app. Second, the distribution of content is primarily controlled by TikTok. Sure, like other social media platforms, you can search content by topic, hashtag, or creator. You can browse the content of certain people that you follow. But unlike any platform before it, there's also a feature called the For You page. This is a full screen scroll of content that is entirely curated by an algorithm. People are hyper aware of this on the platform. The algorithm is referenced constantly by creators. They'll say things like, hopefully the algorithm promotes this, or please don't let this flop, or blow this up. TikTok's algorithm is a fascinating piece of technology. A machine that slowly builds a profile out of your behavior for the sole purpose of deciding what sort of content you will like to see. You don't actively enter your interests or tastes. Instead, you reveal them through interaction patterns. Every action you take develops that profile further, and every swipe reveals their best guess 
for what will keep your attention on the app. It has a tendency to push more radical, evocative, exciting content because that's what generates more interaction. It works in mysterious ways, but it works. I started with zero followers and every follower I gained was a product of that algorithm. By May 2020, I had posted over 100 videos and gained over 10,000 followers. During this period of time, I noticed a lot of changes. I was regularly posting three videos a day and spending about three hours a day on the platform, constantly checking responses to my videos, trying to keep my thumb on the digital pulse. Several big political events, the Democratic primary, the spread of COVID, and the beginning of the summer's Black Lives Matter protests were rapidly circulating on TikTok. And my own thoughts, reactions, and ideas about these events were propelling my follower count ever upwards. My experiment officially ended in May. I wrote the paper that I had proposed, I turned it in, and I promptly continued to post on TikTok. My motivations had shifted dramatically. I wasn't trying to find answers anymore. I was swept up trying to build my following, build my personal brand, and keep growing at all costs. My politics were still the same, and the irony of being an anti-capitalist who was desperately trying to accrue internet social capital was not lost on me. By June 2020, at 20,000 followers, TikTok was consuming my life. I was spending my waking hours agonizing over what to post, what to say, how to get on as many For You pages as I possibly could. My content was getting increasingly bizarre and extreme because I was trying to keep my engagement growing. You can see this evolution for yourself on my page. I was also embedded in several overlapping group accounts, progressive communities, and never-ending political debates. And while the communities were fun, I was starting to get frustrated and pessimistic about the political impact that I could really have. I ended up leaving the app for most of the summer. I had less free time and less energy, and I had to choose between putting my face on TikTok three times a day for zero dollars, or working in a restaurant for $13 an hour. But I couldn't stay away. And a big part of that was that my videos didn't go away. They remained on my page and continued circulating across the internet, being reposted, shared, and continually interacted with. When I left TikTok in June, I had 20,000 followers. And when I returned in August, I had 34,000. I've continued making videos since August, and I've continued my academic research on TikTok as well. The election came and went, but my politics didn't go anywhere. I found a somewhat better balance between my TikTok and my other work, and my audience has never stopped growing. Now, in April 2021, I have over 60,000 followers from almost 300 videos, probably four hours of content total. This experience has given me so much. Going into this project, I never expected this much attention or support, and I am deeply grateful for the platform and the TEDx talk I've been granted by my followers. But just as the success was unexpected, so too were the costs, and there have been several. TikTok today remains one of my constant obsessions. I still get frustrated when my videos don't reach the audience I expect, but when they do reach the audience I expect, my expectations only grow larger. And at the worst times, I feel that I have become just like TikTok's algorithm. I also sit and wait 
constructing a careful profile of the conglomerated mass of my audience, trying as hard as I can to create and show them the content that will keep their attention and keep their engagement. Every interaction with my content is a piece of data that I use to design future uploads, and my understanding of the platform has grown, just as the platform's understanding of me has. The difference between a content creator and a recommendation algorithm is that one of us was designed by a team of computer scientists. One of us never gets tired or burnt out because one of us runs on supercomputers. The other one is a college student who runs on caffeine and bursts of dopamine. One of us designs the rules of the game, and the other one is addicted to play. But there have also been lots of unexpectedly good moments. I've had a few videos really blow up. My most viewed ever was from about a month ago, and now it's at 850,000 views. I've had lots of fun on the platform, especially now that I'm posting less regularly and varying my content more. I've imitated Eminem, I've tried and failed to promote my music, and I've continued to make passionate political arguments for a more radically just and fair world. I've also started to get paid. I was accepted into the TikTok Creator Fund in early February. And I've finally begun to make anywhere from a few cents to a few dollars a day for my content. Not nearly enough to compensate for the value that I and others generate for the billion dollar platform, but something. Additionally, I've been able to witness innovative and inspiring activism by other young people in late May to challenge the ways TikTok's algorithm often discriminates against creators with darker skin, users organized an app-wide blackout. Under hashtags like hashtag Black Voices Heard, we mobilized to set aside a day for only black creators to create and post content, to force the algorithm to platform their voices. TikTok users have used the same algorithm that feeds them content to plan mass movements, to snatch up Trump rally tickets, raise money for mutual aid, and educate a new generation of voters and leaders. My work is just a tiny part of that, but it's still a joy to experience. Indeed, these costs and these joys are the nature of TikTok. The trade-off between them, between personal mental health and the chance to go viral, between trying to make an impact and feeling the impact made on you, between standing up for yourself and standing up for something more, is the essence, the core contradictions of TikTok. These trade-offs are not unique to my experience and not unique to TikTok as a platform. They are the core tensions that underlie our new era of media. Media that is still run by a company, but made by the people for the people. TikTok is a very interesting platform. It's not even four years old, and it's already a massive site for community, culture, and change. Its nature is known and the costs and benefits are clear. Unlike TED Talks, any one of you can start on the platform and get your face in front of millions of people. Like TED Talks, the platform may very well shape what you choose to say. Entering TikTok, entering any space, means making a change to your environment, but also to yourself. Making an impact takes a toll, and that toll should be taken as seriously as any value the platform brings to you and to the world. For me, for now, it's worth the cost. And if any of you agree, best of luck, take care of yourself, be sure to give me a follow 
at Take 4 President, and hopefully, I'll see you on my For You page. Thank you.